Oh, hello. My name is Will from Going Awesome Places and welcome to the home office. I know a little bit of a weird view and seeing it from the other side, but hey, this past year has been really a lot of this, spending time on Zoom calls and the like and other folks seeing you from this particular angle. And so for this video of the Level Up Your Home Office series is going to be really focused on leveling up your virtual call game and doing this with something called Key Light. As you've seen from my home office walkthrough, you'll know that my space looks like this. For my webcam, I've opted to take advantage of the Canon webcam software. So with my complicated monopod extension set up behind the monitor, which you would have seen in the walkthrough, I have my 5D Mark III now and 16 to 35 millimeter wide angle lens mounted and hooked into the computer. But really, the camera gear itself is just one part of the equation. What can really set you apart from looking okay to great is in the lighting. That's where key light comes in. Without it, here's what my calls currently look like. Now every office is going to have a different lighting condition and this is what mine looks like without any additional light. You'll see that there's a lot of natural light coming in from my right side through the two windows and that's actually a good thing, but I find that during the midday that there's a lot of strong light coming in causing this side to be overblown and casting a lot of shadows and uneven lighting on this side. So that's something that can be improved for sure. At night, I look like this. And so up above, I have the fan light on with the warm LEDs pointing downwards. I also have the Philips Hue system set up, two lights behind the monitor, and also to my left, I have the Philips Hue Go. All these are meant to add more light to the room as more ambiance light instead of pointing directly at me. Now you'll find out the color is a little bit warm. It looks good but it's not great. Um, and the 5D Mark III is already applying auto white balance, so it looks more correct in terms of color. My older 5D Mark II was incredibly yellow, so it did not look good at all at night. Overall, you can tell that having a natural light source is a big boost to the whole color and how everything looks, but sometimes you just don't have that kind of control, and especially if you're in a room that doesn't have a lot of natural light. So ultimately, having a controllable light source is the way to go. So in front of me, I have four different solutions that I want to test and show you. First, I have the Elgato Key Light, and at $299 Canadian, this is the most expensive. Next is the Elgato Key Light Air, and at $179, it comes in at a lower price point as the Bigger Brother Key Light. You'll find that it has a smaller form factor with a smaller price tag. Then there's this combination that I came up with which combines a couple of newer products. There's the tabletop stand and there's also this LED panel for photographers. This is $60, this is $75, so coming in at $135 Canadian. And finally I have this miniature LED panel which I primarily use it when I travel as an on-camera light. It's the Aperture ALMX and it costs $200 Canadian. All these are readily available in the US and Canada on Amazon, so they're easy to find. The links are in the description down below. All right, but let's talk about the basics. What exactly is a key light? Well, this is a basic cinematography and photography term that's really simple. This is just the primary light that is lighting the subject. In my case, I have a light actually right here pointing at my face a little bit downwards. I also have some lighting, natural lighting coming in from here, but what's over here is the key light. And so depending on the strength, angle, and color, you're able to create different moods, shapes, and shadows. All right, so now that you know about key light, we can now jump right in to the review. So I finally have the very first light set up. This is the Elgato Key Light, and it's the largest of the bunch. And so when I first took it out, I was just so, well, overwhelmed with how large the thing is. You know, on top of the tabletop stand, the monopod, uh, the little ball head on top, it's the actual panel that really blew me away in terms of being surprised with just how large it is. Um, it overtakes almost everything in, on the table except for maybe the monitor. Uh, it's, it's right up there. You can see it, it's white. It has this white panel. It's very noticeable. Let's turn it on for the very first time to see how it looks. 
So right now I have the natural light coming in this way. A lot of light over here, not so much over here. And the camera is gonna adjust to the lighting and this is with the light on. The panel is on, it's shining a little bit downward towards my face. I'm properly lit up, it creates this nice depth between the subject here and the back and that's exactly what you want from a key light. Um, there's a bit of angle at play here so it casts small shadows over here but I don't really want too many shadows. I want to be kind of the, the primary subject here. So with this light I was really impressed with just how thin it is despite it being very large. Using LEDs basically around the edge of the panel it spreads light to that white piece that diffuses the light downwards. So it's a very soft and balanced light that covers a lot of space, right? Just because of how large that light is. Um, it's got nice heat sinks all around. And again, I'm impressed with just how well it does with the heat. I don't have it on really strong right now, but um, it does a really great job. It's well designed. Um, the only thing I would say that could be improved is that there's a wire, the power uh, line that go, goes from the panel down to underneath my table. Um, there's no real clips or anything like that, so it just kind of dangles off the back. So I wish it had a bit more organization, but I love just how uh, flexible this is. It can go really tall with the monopod. It can extend all the way up or you can bring it down. Uh, it has the ball head, which allows the light to be pivoted and turned in a certain way to exactly how you want it. The tabletop mount works perfectly with the Ergonifist Shift 2.0 standing desk that I have. Uh, I just turned it, uh, tightened it, clipped it to the table, and it's good to go. That means it's a really clean setup, which I really appreciate for how I want my home office to, to look like. Um, but what's most important to me actually is the fact that it is connected to the Wi-Fi. I didn't understand what that meant until I downloaded the Elgato Control Center. So this is an app for Mac or PC. There's also an actual app for the mobile phone on iOS and Android. But what it really allows you to do is control the whole thing from your computer or smartphone. So uh, that's actually what I use to turn it on and off. So off, back on. And after that, you can also control the color temperature and the brightness. So color temperature all the way down to something cool like this, to something really warm. Um, and then I can change the, the brightness. So down to 3% all the way up to, ooh, super bright, 100%. Um, I had it at 25, but I find that during the daylight, 15% is pretty good. Now, one hot tip for you guys is that I was wondering what color temperature should I be setting for something like this? And I did some research, and so in daylight, the sun closely resembles 5600 Kelvins. All right, so 5600 is what I'm gonna set this at and pretty much set it and forget it because this is the proper temperature to match with the incoming light that I'm also getting because it wouldn't make sense to have something really warm or cool coming in from here, but a certain color temperature coming this way. I want them to match together. So 5600 is what you want to set it at. So how do I look like at night with the Elgato key light? I'm going to turn it on and show you. This is what it looks like. The camera is going to balance itself out, but I am much better lit than before. This is before and here's after. Feeling that the Elgato key light is just a little bit too large and obnoxious, I wanted to try the smaller version of it, which is the Elgato key light Air. And just in unboxing this product, you can tell everything is almost miniaturized. The LED panel itself is a lot smaller instead of a rectangle shape. It's actually square in shape and just feels more reasonable in this office space and not as you know dominant of a piece. Now let's actually test the lighting because that's really the main reason why I brought this into the fold is can it do as good of a job as the Elgato Key Light? And I gotta say, this is pretty good. Uh, in terms of filling out me as a subject, I'm getting daylight coming from this side, which was casting some shadow on this side. It wasn't really well lit. This does a good job. Now the panel is smaller, so there's gonna be a bit more drop off on the side, but I don't think that really matters. It can do the same things in terms of color temperature and strength. So I'm at 5600 Kelvin and at 25% strength. 
Now what's interesting is that the scaling is a little bit different because this light is only capable of 1700 lumens versus the previous one was able to go up to 2800 lumens, a lot brighter. So you could probably adjust this up to maybe 35. This is a little bit brighter, um, but I feel like on the top end, you're never gonna use all those lumens anyway. So I don't feel like that's a big uh, drawback of this product. Now, physically, this product is different as well. It doesn't use a table clamp. So that's one of the things I don't like as much because it's not as clean on my desk. There's a large base, square base sitting here that takes up a certain amount of footprint. The pole rises from it. It does have an adjustable um, segment that allows this to go up pretty high, surprisingly. And it also has a really small ball head. That ball head isn't very good but the idea is that once you have it set up, hopefully you'll never have to touch it again. It's angled the same way, roughly at the same height as before, so I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, the other thing I really appreciate with this is that it has really good cable management. So the cable that runs up the pole to the light, there's actually a channel in the pole that secures the light, uh, secures the cable rather, right behind, so you can't even see it. The only time I can see the cable is at the very bottom of the base where it runs out to power. And of course, this uses the same Elgato control center. So I can use my computer or on my phone to control the light on or off like this. Don't even need to go to the switch that's right uh, behind the light. You can control the temperature and the strength, all of those things that you used to be able to do with the larger one, you can do here and at a fraction of the cost. And at night, here's what it looks like. Even with the air being a smaller panel, it actually lights up the subject really nicely at night and quite comparable with the full-size key light. So the Elgato products are really nice, don't get me wrong, but they're a little bit expensive for most people that just want a really simple key light. So I thought to myself, are there other products in the market that I can leverage, ones that are typically used for photography and video, and I thought of newer. They sell really cheap products, typically on Amazon. So I cobbled together a combination of an LED panel with a tabletop stand. And so here, I don't have it on. I'm gonna turn it on right now. And now the light is on. And in setting this up, it was actually pretty easy to do. It wasn't too complicated. The clamp went on relatively easily. The light went on and just had to screw a few things in. One thing you'll notice right away is that I really do miss the Wi-Fi controlled or remote controlled light. So everything is analog in that there's a switch in the back, the color temperature is manually controlled by a dial, the strength is also controlled by the dial. So when you're on a call, it's not really easy to make those adjustments, those micro adjustments. You do have to have everything set up. What I will say that is typically once you know your settings, you're not gonna be adjusting it too much. So set up at the right angle, strength, color, looks pretty good in this scenario. So you should be good to go. The other thing I do have a gripe with is the tabletop stand. It's just not designed very well. It's quite flimsy and doesn't secure to the table really uh, securely. Um, essentially, as I was kind of adjusting the angles, it was actually changing the direction of the stand as well. So it wasn't a really tight clamp. And as well, I wish the C-clamp was just a little bit deeper, which would allow the pole to be further into the table, which it isn't. So as a standing table, when I'm going up and down, it has a chance to hit the shelves that I have. So overall, yes, I'm saving a lot of money, but I do miss a lot of the extra features that come with the Elgato. Again at night, I'm using the Philips Hue lights to give some fill light behind, but there's something a little bit missing and that's where the key light comes into play. So I'm gonna be turning on this combination to show you what it looks like. With the key light on, you can now see an increased perception of depth with me properly lit up and the background just a little bit darker. I look pretty good. For the final key light I wanna review is my personal Aperture ALMX. This is a super portable, LED panel that's used for travel typically for my photo and video projects as a key light on my camera. But I realized I could adapt this for home use by having it permanently plugged in via USB to the light using the cold shoe adapter uh, bracket on top of the DSLR to give it that off access uh, placement. And then the miniature ball head that it comes with so that I can have it articulated and angled directly at me in the way that I want. So let's turn it on and see how it looks. And voila, it's actually pretty good. 
for such a small panel, the smallest panel that we've reviewed in this series of four. It lights up the room really well because it comes with a diffuser as well. So it balances the light all the way throughout and me as a subject is properly lit up for a virtual call. Now, one thing it doesn't have, of course, is Wi-Fi control. So there are physical switches at the top that control it. And the other thing as well you need to know about is that this doesn't have the micro adjustments that you might want in color temperature and brightness. There are just certain notches of brightness and certain notches of color from really warm to really cool. From my testing, you want this setup to be the coolest color and at the lowest brightness because otherwise it's just way too bright and here it looks actually pretty good. Now, what I really love about this light is that it's just super versatile, right? Because I can use it at home, but quickly dismantle it, put it in my backpack and use it for the road. So maybe in a restaurant as a key light for my food or a key light for a subject that I'm shooting or in video projects where the room might be a little bit too dark. So this is a super functional, super versatile product that is not only useful at home, but when traveling as well. And now finally, this is the Aperture ALMX at night. You have to remember that this light is a little less off axis compared to the other ones we reviewed so far. And for its size, it does a pretty good job. So you've seen it all now. Four different key lights under daytime and nighttime conditions, which is my favorite and the best key light for you. If I factor in cost, functionality, performance, and quality, I think the Elgato Keylight Air is going to be a favorite for most people here. It's not gonna rely on clamping to a table, which may not make sense for most people, actually. I also love the control center, which allows you to control the light from your computer or phone. It's well-built, has nice cable organizing features, and is just super clean without being overwhelmingly large. Now I know, you're probably wondering why I don't have any ring lights up here. While they work great for beauty, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense for virtual calls in my opinion. The whole idea of ring lights is to mount your camera lens through the light. And so if you're using it like a key light with it off access like I do, it actually doesn't do anything for you. You might catch a glint of the ring reflecting on your eye, but it won't be noticeable at all on a virtual call. The one I'm using here is a generic one from Amazon and it's got tripod legs, which totally doesn't make sense for me, but it gives you an idea. The light is also just large. I much prefer the small form factor of the Elgato Keylight Air. Well, there you have it. That is how you level up your Zoom call game by using key lights to make sure you look fabulous on camera. If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell so you're notified of all upcoming videos. The Level Up Your Home Office series has a ton of valuable videos that you'll definitely want to check out, so make sure you watch the playlist. And as I mentioned before, all the products mentioned will be listed and linked to in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.